Hey guys, Chicago car accident lawyer Scott DeSalvo here shooting you another video. And today's topic is, what is the number one limiting factor for your damages in a car accident case? What's the number one thing that limits the money you can recover, the damages you can receive in a car crash case? So some of you are gonna think like, um, how big are my medical bills? Are my medical bills under 100,000 or over 100,000? Some of you might say, um, can they claim that it was partially my fault and it'll reduce what I get in the damages? Those are all good answers and those are answers that many attorneys would give you. But I will tell you, and not many people realize this because not many people who, who don't do what I do for a living um, evaluate things this way, but it's important, right? The three things I do to evaluate a case is, how did it happen? In other words, is it all somebody else's fault or is it partially my client's fault? That's number one. Number two, how serious and permanent are the injuries and how extensive is the medical treatment? So that's number two. And number three is the topic of today's video, insurance, auto insurance or business insurance, right? So in many, many of the best, biggest cases in my office where the first two factors are awesome, like my client didn't do anything wrong and my client did everything right, and their injuries, God help them, are profound, like multiple surgeries, like I represented a lady whose case uh, wrapped up some time ago who had a serious, um, somebody crossed the center line and hit, hit her head on, and she's had multiple, so she's still having surgeries on her leg. That's how bad the fracture was, um, and her hip. She's probably had six surgeries now, right? So in a situation like that, huge damages means a valuable case, right? But the third factor is the, is the number one factor that limits what people get in car crash cases when those other two factors are all awesome, right? So it's somebody else's fault, your injuries are horrible, your medical bills are high, you're not working. That third factor often makes the case limited in what we can get for you, right? And that is insurance coverage. So in Illinois right now, the limits used to be 20,000 per person 40,000 per accident, right? Um, now the limits are 25,000 per person, 50,000 per accident. But if you've been to the doctor or the hospital recently, you know that $25,000 can go like that. If you're in the emergency room for a day or two, that's $25,000 right there. So the, lim the state limits are low, and I always tell people, if you drive, and, and the difference between state minimum coverage and 100,000 or 250 or 500, the difference between those levels of coverage and what you pay is not that much money. Now listen, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, do what you have to do. But if you have extra, a little bit of extra wiggle room and you wanna protect yourself, your family and others, get a higher, insurance limit. So my point is, let's let's do a hypothetical. Let's say it's that lady's case. Somebody hits her head on, she's doing everything right. And she's got, let's say, $300,000 in medical bills. Well, what if the other car only has 25,000 in coverage? That's right. We're probably limited to 25,000 in recovery for her. And, um, You know, a lot of people in response to that will say, well, why don't we just sue that person individually? Well, I do an asset search on people, on the defendant, and I find out, do they have a law license, a doctor's license, a nurse's license, a beautician's license? In other words, do they have any license with the state of Illinois showing what their profession is, right? Then I run their name through this database I'm, I can subscribe to because I'm an attorney. Only private eyes and attorneys and judges can subscribe to this database as far as I know. Law enforcement too. Um, 
and it tells me, do they own a house or multiple houses? Do they own a bunch of cars? In other words, are they rich, right? Well, why would I wanna know that? If they're rich, there's a higher percentage chance that they will be able to pay money out of their pocket, okay? But ask yourself this question, if they don't own property, or you know, or they, maybe they own a little one bedroom condo, and they don't own a bunch of cars, and they don't own a business, they don't own a corporation, they don't own a boat or an airplane, nothing like that. And they're, they've got state minimum insurance policy limits, right? What are the chances that they're rich and they're gonna be able to pay you? Because when you sue somebody and you go after them individually, all they have to do is file for bankruptcy. And then you can go to court and win a million dollars against them but you'll never collect it. The debt that they owe you will be discharged in bankruptcy. And they can do a bankruptcy for probably $2,000, a thousand or two, something like that. So it doesn't make sense for us to go after them. Um, now what happens if in that same scenario, you have a serious leg fracture, 300,000 in medical, it wasn't your fault, the other guy has 25. Well, if the other guy has 25, what is your insurance? Because in Illinois, it's mandatory that you have something called underinsured motorist coverage. Well, it's mandatory that your insurance company offers that coverage to you, and usually people take it. You have to specifically opt out of that and sign something saying you don't want it. It would be a mistake because that coverage protects you if somebody runs into you and they don't have enough insurance, right? So let's say you went out and got $250,000 insurance on your car and the other guy had 50 or the other guy had 25. Well, what would happen then is we would collect the 25 from the other driver and we would be able to collect 225 from your policy for a total recovery of 250. Now you may be saying, Scott, you said my bills were 300,000 and there's only 250. Well. I don't want you to worry about that because out of every case, you always get paid. Even if all we did was collect the 25, that 25 gets carved up. I take an attorney's fee and get my case costs back. I call the doctors and work out the, a deal with any doctor or insurance company who has a lien or a right of subrogation, and you always end up with money in your pocket, no matter what the settlement is, okay? or a verdict or whatever it is. Same with the 250, it just means that the amount of money going into your pocket is gonna be much better, right? So it often works out that it'll be, you know, if it's, if it's a big case with lots of damages and a relatively small recovery because of the limit of the insurance company, it usually breaks out to something about a third, a third, and a third. The lawyer gets about a third, all of the medical doctors, insurance companies that, you know, health insurance that actually paid the bills and um, doctors with liens who didn't get paid yet but want to get paid out of the case, all of them get about a third. They're entitled to 40% under the law, but I can negotiate them down um, quite often. And then the injured person ends up with a third. So my point is, you can see that this is super complicated. And so if you've been involved in a crash and you're concerned about this number one factor, insurance coverage, talk to a lawyer, honestly. You know, if, if I'm too folksy for you or my mannerisms or the way I talk drives you nuts, talk to another lawyer. But don't do it yourself because this is too complicated and you can actually put money in your pocket and get all of those bills worked out if you have a lawyer. But if you do it yourself, it's gonna be bad news. Um, there's a lot, you know, if you let the insurance company help you with the bills, here's what they do. They tell you, oh, we paid a $20,000 bill for you. And you're like, oh, thank God, they paid a $20,000 bill. But what they don't tell you is, they got on the phone with the provider and worked that bill down to like $1,000 or $2,000. So they're getting credit for solving a $20,000 bill for one or $2,000 and they're pocketing the rest of it. They're not giving you any. If I do it or an injury lawyer does it, they get that $20,000 bill and they work out a deal 
you may be putting $8,000 in your pocket, which is why you need to talk to a lawyer. But anyway, we're getting pretty far afield. My point is, after doing this for almost 25 years, the number one limiting factor, especially on good cases, is the amount of insurance the defendant has and you have. So if you have state minimum insurance, consider getting higher limits and consider switching to a name brand insurance company if you have a, a weird sounding one, a, you know, a substandard insurance. So um, I know this was kind of, we kind of went far afield and it got pretty technical, but I hope the information helps you and I hope I explained it in a way that was understandable. Thanks for watching the video. Um, if you or a loved one needs help and has been in an accident, give me a holler. 312-500-4500. 312-500-4500. Anytime, night, day. It could be Christmas morning. It could be Halloween at midnight, the witching hour, right? Um, that phone always gets answered and they shoot me your information immediately. If I'm awake, I'll get to you. Um, and if I'm asleep, I check my phone as soon as I wake up. So if you wouldn't mind, um, check out my website. I've got a bunch of tools on there to help you calculate whether you have a good case or what your case value might be. Links are in the description. And if you enjoy my content, please consider liking and subscribing and hit the red bell to be notified. And finally, I've got a uh, link in the description where you can leave me a five-star review on Google if you would be so kind. So thank you for watching. Have a great day and take care.